Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 28 of the chapter Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes. In the past two videos, we've been discussing the reactions of Hello Arenes and I told you about nucleophilic substitution reactions. In this video, we are going to do the second kind of reactions that Hello Arenes show and that is electrophilic substitution. You have studied about electrophilic substitution in your class 11. And you know, you've studied it uh, with regard to um, a benzene ring. And electrophilic substitution, just like the benzene ring, haloarenes also undergo electrophilic substitution of the ring. That is, the electrophilic substitution reaction takes place in the ring. For uh, the hydrogens of the ring, they are usually the ones that are substituted. So even in the case of haloarenes, you have the same kind of reaction. The electrophilic substitution is not going to substitute the halogen of the haloarene. It is going to substitute the hydrogens of the ring. Therefore, we say the substitution is taking place at the ring. And what are the new, uh, electrophilic substitution reactions? They are halogenation, nitration, sulfonation, and the Friedel-Crafts alkylation and acylation. We'll be studying about these reactions in the next video. But right now, I want you to, uh, I will be talking about some basic uh, things before I come to the actual electrophilic substitution reaction and the mechanism of the reaction. Or these four that I mentioned, that is halogenation, nitration, sulfonation, and the Friedel-Crafts reactions. The presence of a halogen atom on, which is connected to the benzene ring, it has an effect on electrophilic substitution and what is the effect or on any reaction basically what is the effect of the presence of a halogen on the benzene ring the presence of a halogen on the benzene ring shows two effects or it causes two effects the first one is that this halogen which is attached it is a slightly deactivating group when it says deactivating, it means that it makes the benzene ring slightly less active for electrophilic substitution. And the second effect that it has is that this group, that is the halogen which is attached to the benzene ring, it is ortho and para directing. It means that whatever the substitution takes place would take place either at the ortho, let us say that the halogen is here then the substitution will either take place at the ortho positions or it will take place at the para position. So we say that the halogen atom is slightly deactivating one. Secondly, it is ortho and para directing. Now it is deactivating and why is it deactivating? It is deactivating due to a property which can, due to a property that is inductive effect, which can explain its deactivating behavior. And it is ortho and para directing due to a property which is known as resonance effect, which can be used to explain why is it ortho and para directing. That is the reason why I said that we will come to the reactions later. Again, inductive effect and resonance effect are effects that you have studied in class 11. And this would be a very good time to revise them. Because once you understand them, it becomes very easy to understand why uh, the electrophilic substitution takes place in a certain way. The first thing that the, uh, the halogen is a slightly deactivating group and we attribute it to a property which is known as inductive effect. So let's talk about inductive effect. Do you know when, uh, uh, when there is a chain of uh, atoms? And the atoms that are connected to each other through covalent bonds, they have different electronegativities. What happens? Whenever there is a difference in electronegativity, the more electronegative atom has a tendency to pull the shared pair of electrons towards itself. Right? So it has a tendency to pull the shared because it is more electronegative. When we say negative, we mean deficient. So it is more electron negative, it is more electron deficient, electron deficient, therefore it has a tendency to pull, it is more needy, it needs to pull the electrons towards itself. So we say it is electron negative, the more electron negative atom pulls the shared pair of electrons towards itself, thereby leading to a polarity in the bond. The bond, the molecule becomes polar. Why? Because when there was a bond which had one electron contributed by one atom, and 
let us say that this is one atom carbon and this is chlorine. Now chlorine is more electronegative. This is a covalent bond. A covalent bond is nothing but two electrons, one electron contributed by carbon and the other electron contributed by chlorine. So if chlorine is more electronegative, which it is, it pulls this shared pair of electrons a little more towards itself. So what happens? The electrons are closer to chlorine and they, are a little they become a little further away from carbon. What happens as a result of this? Electrons are negatively charged. So the negative charge is shifting towards chlorine. Therefore, chlorine acquires a partial negative charge. The delta, the small alphabet delta stands for a little bit partial. So it acquires a partial. We would not say it's a complete negative charge because there has not been a complete transfer of electrons. So it becomes partially negatively charged. At the same time, carbon who lost that electron partially becomes partially positively charged. Now, this molecule is polar in nature. It has or this bond has acquired a polarity. And the polarity is such that the more electronegative atom becomes negative, partially negative, and the more electropositive atom becomes partially positive. Now, the moment this carbon becomes partially positive, it becomes deficient in electron. It needs the electron. So what does it do? Let us say it is connected to the next carbon in the molecule, right? If Now it will start pulling towards the next. It will start pulling, asking for the electron. Okay, chlorine was really strong. It took away my electron. Can you give me a little bit of your electron? So it pulls that electron slightly, but Carbon is not as electronegative as chlorine. Therefore, it is not so strong. It cannot really pull that electron very close to itself. So, carbon also, the second carbon also acquires now, as a result of which it pulls the electron and acquires that positive charge may be reduced slightly, but it is still uh, positive. This carbon also acquires a partial positive charge. Now, we say this partial is even more partial than that partial. <laughs> it's a strange thing to say. When we say this was partially positively charged, it was slightly electron deficient, but it was not as electron deficient or as electronegative as chlorine, so it was less electronegative. So this carbon now becomes even more partially positive, which means the actually the positive charge is even lesser in the third carbon the third atom so one bond polarity of one bond took place that affected and made the next bond polar and that affected the next bond and made the next bond also polar so this goes on till three steps for three bonds the effect the polarity is created or is spread out to three more bonds and this effect of the shifting of polarity from one bond to the next bond to the next bond involving three bonds is known as inductive effect. Let us now read this. When a covalent bond is formed between two atoms, between atoms of different electronegativity, the electron density is towards the electron, is towards the electronegative atom. The two electrons, the electron density would be more towards the electronegative atom. This shift results in a polar bond, which induces polarity. It is, there was no polarity between carbon and carbon, but it induced polarity by making that carbon partially positive. It induced a polarity in the next carbon also, which induces polarity in the chain. For example, you had this methyl group CH3, CH2Cl. Here chlorine was electronegative. It became partially negatively charged and made this carbon partially positively charged, which further made the next carbon also partially even lesser, lesser charged. But the more the delta is, the smaller the quantity is. So this was partially positively charged. This was even lesser of, pos of partial positive charge. This polarization is known as inductive effect. Vanishingly small, it, now this inductive effect becomes vanishingly small. Vanishingly small means that after three bonds, the fourth bond will not, the inductive effect cannot spread up to the fourth bond. It can only create polarity up to three bonds. The fourth bond will not be affected by inductive effect. So it becomes vanishing, it vanishes. It becomes vanishingly small after three bonds. This can be 
Now, the inductive effect can be both. If on one hand I showed you an electronegative atom pulling the electrons towards itself. Now, if this is the alkane or the, uh, hello, uh, the uh, arene, it has only carbon chains in it. This atom which is added here, it could be electron withdrawing, it could be electronegative, it could be more electropositive also. If it is electropositive, the effect would be the opposite, that it would push electrons towards the chain, it would push electrons towards this carbon and this carbon is being cluttered with too many electrons, so it pushes its electrons to the next carbon, that pushes electrons to the next carbon. So again, the polarity is created, but the opposite charges. If this was more electropositive, this would be partially positively charged. And as a result, this would be partially negatively charged because it pushed electrons towards the carbon. And this carbon pushes the electrons towards the next carbon and therefore that would be delta delta negative. So you have this would be delta positive, this would be delta negative and this would be delta delta negative. So we say inductive effect can be both it can be shown by both the group which is electron withdrawing that is like pulling the electron towards itself or electron donating electron donating is one that pushes electrons away from itself towards the chain and electron withdrawing would be one that pulls the electrons towards itself away from the chain right so this can be this group which is attached it could be electron withdrawing or it could be electron donating now tell me from your uh, your sense of halogens. All halogens, if you look at the periodic table, in comparison to carbon, what would you say? Halogens are in the 17th group. They are highly electronegative. So if they are highly electronegative, what do you think uh, any halogen would be? Would it be electron withdrawing or would it be electron donating? It would be electron withdrawing because it is electronegative. Anything that is more electronegative will pull the electrons towards itself. So when you have haloarenes, the presence of the halogen, the halogen is an electron withdrawing group. Since it is an electron withdrawing group, it is pulling the electron away from the ring, that is the benzene ring. And electrophilic substitution, what does that mean? Electro means electrons, Phil philic means loving. So who would be an electron loving species, a species that is positive? that is positively charged. Therefore, for electrophilic substitution, if the halogen is present and is pulling the electrons away from the ring and the substitution is taking place because that substance which is coming is loving that electron and is coming for the electrons and the electrons are being pulled away by some other atom like chlorine, then the halogen is a deactivating group. It deactivates the ring for electrophilic substitution. I hope I'm clear. If not, I would ask you to rewind this part a little and understand this. Why is inductive effect making, uh, why is inductive effect responsible for making the presence of halogen uh, or the halogen a deactivating group? Why does it act or hinder the electrophilic substitution reaction? Now having understood that these groups can be both electron coming generally back to inductive effect because I want this concept to be clear to you. Since these can be both electron withdrawing and electron donating groups, we can have uh, examples of these electron withdrawing groups can be nitro group, cyano group, carboxy group, uh, aryloxy group and of course the halogens. They are also electron withdrawing groups. And what would electron donating groups be which would push the electrons towards the chain and change the uh, signs that is this would be positive, this would be partially negative and this would be partially negative. Such electron donating groups are examples are alkyl groups like methyl group, ethyl group. Right? So now this is the benzene ring and the chlorine is attached to it when we say when we talk of haloarenes. So the presence of haloarene, the halogen, what is happening? It is pulling the electrons towards itself from the ring. Since it pulls the electrons towards itself, the carbons which are adjacent to it, that is, they will also acquire a partial positive charge and the next carbon, it, you know, inductive effect travels to three bonds. So this is the first bond, second bond, third bond. Till here, you'll have the inductive effect. And then this bond will not be affected by inductive effect, but the electrons have been pulled away from the ring. 
and the electrophile had come to the ring out of its love for electrons, for those electrons which have already been taken away by the halogen. Therefore, this is a deactivating group. Halogens are deactivating groups. They do, they do not help in the electrophilic substitution. But the opposite effect is also there, which is resonance effect. Resonance effect is responsible for activating the ring. Due to inductive effect, the ring becomes less active towards uh, electrophilic substitution. But resonance effect helps in the, on the other hand, these are opposing processes. Chlorine is deactivating, or sorry, halogens are deactivating due to inductive effect, but they are activating due to resonance effect in the uh, ring, if they are present, if they are connected to the benzene ring. So these two forces, opposite forces, when they are acting, the one which is stronger will determine whether the electrophilic substitution takes place or not. So let us now revise resonance effect also and then we'll apply it to electrophilic substitution. You know what resonance is. When you have alternating double bonds, these alternating double bonds in any compound, when you have alternate, we say that double bonds are conjugated. So when you have alternating double bonds in conjugation and as they form a ring in the case of benzene, these alternating double bonds, the electrons of the pi bonds, they kind of become free. If they, you know, it is as if you have a, a, a complex of homes and the kids are those pi electrons. So if your house is very exposed, is right next to the main road, you would not like to have your children go down and play in the garden because the road is right next to the garden and a kid may uh, and you would not want them unsupervised. You would like to be there, you would like to hold them and keep them within your, uh, uh, within your control so that they don't run onto the road. But if you have a housing complex which is a gated complex and all the homes are, uh, are surrounding and the park is in the middle, there's no traffic, there's no main road running, there, they are encompassed. That is what happens in the case of a benzene ring. These electrons, which are kids, the pi electrons. Now, if they let the pi electrons come out and play inside the ring, inside the building complex, there's no problem because there's no main road there. There's no traffic there. So the kids can go down in the park and have and they can play even unsupervised. That is what happens in the case of resonance. So the kids can go down in the park and they can play unsupervised. Now, that is the role of uh, resonance. You can relate that to uh, even unsupervised the kids can be playing. So you can imagine now these pi electrons are like those kids. So when they see the complex is gated, it is a closed, it is a conjugated system, it is secure. Electrons, okay, you can go out and play on your own. So what do they do? They delocalize themselves. They run, hop from one place to the other. This, the, These two kids go to this house, they go to that house and they all the kids, they play together. They run here, they run there. They are enjoying themselves within the ring. That delocalization of electrons is known as resonance. It renders stability to any structure. Whenever there is resonance, there would be more stability because there is no fear. You're not holding on to the electrons. You, they can just go out and they can have some, they can be delocalized, they can be free to move around. So the presence of a halogen can have an effect on resonance. Either it can increase the resonance or it can decrease the resonance of the electrons. So let us see what is the kind of resonance. What is this resonance effect? Now I'm not talking of resonance. Resonance effect is what is the effect of these groups which are attached to the benzene ring on resonance, right? So we say the polarity produced in the molecule by the interaction of two pi bonds. Now, whenever these two pi bonds which are conjugated, a polarity is created within the molecule due to the presence of these pi bonds, as a result of which the electrons can jump. If there was no polarity, there was, you have less electrons, okay, I'll come here. Unless there is that kind of a polarity created, the electrons will not move. So, Whenever there are two pi bonds or there is a pi bond and it is in conjugation. Conjugation means alternating. It is in conjugation with a, an atom which has lone pair of electrons. 
the lone pair of electrons can also participate in resonance. And I explained this to you when we did the nucleophilic substitution reactions. So the lone pair of electrons can also participate in resonance. So whenever the polarity, there is a polarity that is produced in the molecule by the interaction of two pi bonds uh, or a pi bond and a lone pair of electrons which is present on an adjacent atom. The effect is now due to this lone pair, this lone pair can also participate in the, uh, in the conjugation or in the resonance. So the effect is transmitted and since it can participate, it is these two electrons will also come and play in the complex. So they are also participating in resonance. So this effect will be transmitted not only the, by, by the lone pair of electrons will not remain only on chlorine, they will go, they will go in the entire building complex and play with all the kids and come back. So we say the effect is transmitted through the chain. They travel all over. So it is transmitted through the chain. And there are two types of resonance effects. It's also known as the mesomeric effect. You call it positive R or negative R. That is positive resonance effect or negative resonance effect. Let me just clear the board and write down about the positive and negative resonance effects. Give me a minute. All right, I'm giving you a moment to take the picture of the screen. As I told you that resonance effect is also known as mesomeric effect and it is of two types that is plus R and minus R effect. So let us now study the plus R effect. That is addition of resonance or it is contributing. The positive and negative although the way it has been defined in the book I would like you to imagine it in terms of the positive or negative to be positive being something that helps in the resonance and negative as being something that is uh, taking away the electrons from resonance. And that is what it basically is, as you will understand from this definition also. But yet, I would like it to be very clear in your mind, just as we said, activating group and deactivating group. Activating group was, uh, uh, so chlorine was a deactivating group. And uh, an activating group would have been one that would have contributed, uh, that would not have pulled the electrons towards itself which would have contributed electrons to the ring for electrophilic substitution. So I would like to Im uh, you to imagine or keep the same picture that positive is something good, which means it is helping the reaction and negative is something bad, which is not helping the reaction. So when would this happen? In the case of electrophilic substitution, the positive resonance effect or plus R effect, this can be explained as the transfer of electrons away from the atom or the substituent group. The atom or the substituent group in our case is a halogen. The atom which is connected to the benzene ring is the halogen. So when the transfer of electrons is taking place away from that atom, it means the electrons are going towards the ring. So if they are going, if the electron density in the ring will increase, the electrophile would love to come and attack that because that is what it is looking for. It is looking for electrons. So we say in this, but in this definition, in this definition, you get a feeling that it is moving away as if it is something uh, bad that's happening. No, actually, this is what is the positive factor or the good factor. In this, in this, the transfer of electrons takes place away from the atom or the substituent group attached to the conjugated system. The conjugated system is the benzene ring where the resonance already exists. Now this group is present and this has a tendency that it has a lone pair of electrons which can be given to the ring. Right? If it can be given to the ring, it is increasing the electron density in the ring and therefore it is making the ring available for electrophile to come and uh, attack it. So what do we notice? We notice that this is what is in the case of plus R effect what happens. Amine is an example or in the case of aniline, NH2 or the amino group is present here. It Nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons. This lone pair of electrons which is connected to the atom which is attached to the conjugated system that was the definition. The polarity is produced in the molecule by interaction of two pi bonds or a pi bond and a lone pair of electrons present on the adjacent atom. The effect is transmitted through the chain. So this lone pair of electrons over nitrogen 
it can participate it is in conjugation do you see double bond single bond double bond single bond double bond single bond and then a lone pair here so or you could say here this is a double bond and a single bond and a lone pair so this lone pair can come here and it can form a double bond and thus it can participate in conjugation and that is what it does the lone pair of electrons forms a second bond here resulting in the formation of a double bond with the NH2 group but as soon as nitrogen gives its lone pair of electrons to form a uh, this conju uh, this uh, conjugate bond the nitrogen acquires a positive charge and when it acquires a positive charge a carbon cannot have five electrons uh, sorry cannot have five bonds since this carbon cannot have make four five bonds what happens this the second bond or the pi bond here the electrons of the pi bond are pushed to the next carbon that is the adjacent carbon now the double bond is formed here the pi electrons were transferred to the next carbon and therefore you got the, a negatively charged or lone pair of electrons is present on this carbon which is a negative which acquires a negative charge now one electron was off the carbon itself and the other electron was from the carbon which was the adjacent carbon so out of these one electron does not belong to this therefore you have one negative charge and just in the same way when nitrogen gave one electron for the bond it gave two electrons the lone pair therefore it acquired a positive charge now this negative charge dangling electrons are not happy they want to form bonds they want to be delocalized on wish but that is what the dance is all about you know they become alone then they go and form a bond then they get alone then they form a bond that's the dance they are dancing all through which is known as resonance so the electron it does not want to dangle it wants to form a bond now so it goes here and it forms a double bond here as soon as it forms a second bond here this carbon now has five bonds and therefore it cannot have five bonds so it says okay i'm accommodating you but these pi electrons will have to be pushed to the next next carbon so when those pi electrons are pushed towards the next carbon the negative charge comes here the negative charge now again tries to move to the next bond when it moves here to form a next bond a second bond here the pi electrons of this bond are pushed to the next carbon and the process continues here when the negative charge finally reaches this carbon when it does it it again bumps to the next it rolls over to the next bond to form a second bond and when it does that the second bond which was formed initially in the first step is pushed back to nitrogen to give back its lone pair of electrons and you come back to the same structure and then the dance begins again and then it comes back here and then the dance begins here this is resonance constant delocalization constant movement of electrons so this is plus r effect why is it plus because it is adding electrons to the ring and any group which would add electrons to the ring would make the ring available or make the ring richer in electrons and therefore the electrophile would love to attack such a ring now what did i say in the beginning that the uh, halogen atom it is uh, it is deactivating it is a deactivating group which we explain on the basis of inductive effect and it is ortho and para directing you remember and i said that is because of resonance effect why is it ortho and para directing it is ortho and para directing because the electrophile is attacking electron and where do you see the electron is jumping free electrons dangling electrons come come form a bond the electrons are dangling at ortho position and the para position do you see the the electrons are free they are not in the bound form at the ortho and para positions and that is why the electrophile will come and attack it only the substitution of the hydrogen will take place at the ortho and the para position and that is why a halogen is known as an ortho para directing group due to its resonance effect what kind of resonance effect positive resonance effect other examples of groups that have a positive resonance effect are the halogen oh or ocor nh2 nhr nr2 nhcor these are all examples of groups that would add electrons to the uh, to the ring and if you pay attention to all of these groups you will notice that each one of them has some atom which has got lone pair of electrons on them 
it is this lone pair of electrons which is attached to the car the atom bearing the lone pair of electrons which is attached to carbon which will give those lone pair of electrons to participate in the resonance for example here the halogen had it oxygen oxygen here you have oxygen here you have nitrogen 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 and nitrogen so whenever you have an atom, uh, a functional group in which you find that the uh, atom which is connected to the carbon atom of the ring has got a lone pair of electrons will show a plus R effect. The other effect is minus R effect, although now this is not related to our uh, electrophilic substitution in the case of uh, haloalkanes because we are talking of halogens and we've already covered that. Yet, since we are talking of resonance effect, let us study this also. Plus R effect would be the opposite of minus R effect. If you have a group which is attached to the ring, which does not give electrons to the ring, rather it pulls away electrons from the ring. It is not giving electrons to the ring, it is pulling the electrons away. So what is it doing in a way? It is an electron withdrawing kind of a group. <coughs> and if it is pulling the electrons away from the ring, the charge that that will move, if it pulls electrons away, it becomes negatively charged. And if it becomes negatively charged, what revolves in the ring? What revolves is the positive charge. And since it is positive charge which is revolving, it is not an electrophile which will be attracted to it. It would be a nucleophile which would be attracted to it. So for plus R effect, we say this effect is observed when the transfer of electrons is towards the substituent group. The the Electrons are being transferred from the ring towards the substituent group. So the atom which is attached to the carbon, it pulls the electrons away towards itself. An example is the nitro group. In nitro group, all electrons are already occupied. The lone pair of electrons on nitrogen is already forming a coordinate bond with one oxygen. So it is not available. Since the lone pair of electrons is not available for conjugation, now nitrogen has used its two of its electrons to form a bond with this oxygen, a coordinate bond with this oxygen, and therefore it needs electrons. It is an electron withdrawing group, you could say. So it pulls the electrons away from the, these pi electrons were already dancing. They said, oh, you have less electrons. You need electrons. We'll give them to you. They are ready to move out of the ring and come to the next atom, to that atom. So the pi electrons, they get transferred to nitrogen, resulting in the, these electrons move here, forming a double bond here. And naturally nitrogen cannot form so many bonds. So what happens? The pi electron here, it transfers nitrogen, uh, the uh, what the pi electrons here they transfer to this oxygen making this oxygen negatively charged and when this oxygen becomes negatively charged the pi electrons which moved it out of the ring and formed a double bond here at this carbon both the electrons were lost to form the double bond therefore this carbon acquires positively charged when this carbon becomes positively charged this becomes a positively charged center and there are extra electrons and pi electrons are kind of free. So it becomes deficient in electrons. So it starts attracting the electrons from the next carbon. Okay, you have those extra electrons. Can you give them to me? Because now I am positively charged. You have to neutralize me. So these electrons, they shift to the next carbon. They say, okay, I'll not form my double bond here. I'll form my double bond here. But when it does that, it takes both the electrons, but one electron belongs to this carbon. So a second bond is formed here, but this carbon now, due to its loss of the electron which it was using to form the pi bond, the positive charge now comes here. When the positive charge now comes here, next what happens? The positive charge now appeals to the next bond. Hey, uh, that guy also went away and now I'm a positive charge. I need to be neutralized. Can you help me? So these electrons say, okay, we'll help you. They move to the next bond. As a result, this carbon loses its electron and that one now becomes positively charged. When that becomes positively charged, again the same thing happens. The positive, these electrons now of the second bond, they come here to, again it is appealing to the next double bond. And the next double bond is the double bond that was formed in the beginning. So it says, will you give me my, your electrons? Yes, I will. It takes the bond back. It forms the double bond here. And the next structure you get is again the same one. And the same thing happens. Resonance this time is occurring, but in which it is not the negative charge which is 
revolving, it is the positive charge which is revolving. Electrons are still moving. Electrons are still changing their position, but this time it is not the negative charge, but positive charge which is revolving. And positive, since we are talking of electrophilic substitution reaction, positively charged uh, nucleus is not what uh, what the electrophile, uh, sorry, the electrophile uh, itself is positively charged and it does not need a positive charge to get attracted. It would rather be repelled by the positive charge. Therefore, electrophilic substitution will not take place for groups which have which have got a minus R effect. Examples of these groups are carboxylic acid group, aldehyde group, COOH, CHO, CO, CN, and NO2. Wherever the atom which is attached to the carbon atom does not have lone pair of electrons and has a tendency to rather pull the electrons towards itself, that is where you will have a minus R effect. So these were the two effects, that is inductive effect and resonance effect, due to which the halo, halogen atom on which is connected to the uh, arene, um, that is the benzene ring, it is deactivating due to inductive effect and it is ortho paradirecting due to resonance effect. So with this video, I hope conceptually you are clear why this happens in the next video we are going to do the actual reactions with this i would like to wrap up today's video if you found it helpful give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now